Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we return to talking about former president and terrible Democrat named Barack Hussein Obama. That's right. Barack Obama has come back into the news recently because he just never really seemed to go away. He retired from the presidency when he was out of office by 2016, taken over by Donald J. Trump, of course, and perhaps that's the reason he's been so bitter about it. Usually presidents will leave the office and kind of retire, write a book, you know, go into obscurity, just enjoy their time off and, you know, retire, basically. But Obama is just, I guess he's a little younger and he's a little bitter. He's not very happy that Trump has taken over the rings and possibly, you know, taken away a lot of his legacy. So that's the reason he's appeared from time to time, just to bash the new president, just to like put his hat in the ring and say, hey, I hate this guy. He says dumb stuff all the time. He's also like released documentaries with Netflix. He's had these shows and he's bought this big house that was in the news and Martha's Vineyard, even though they said that global warming is going to have us underwater in a few years. But he's buying houses on the beach anyway. And he's also recently this week, he appeared on his wife's podcast. There was this weird announcement on Twitter where Apparently, Michelle Obama started a podcast, and they're like, hey, guess who her first guest is? Well, it's her husband, President Barack Obama. Pretty silly, pretty self-indulgent. And now, today, we're talking about the news story. Obama's come in the news recently because he basically used a person's funeral as a political event. He politicized this recent funeral. A very long-time running politician named John Lewis passed away recently, and Barack Obama appeared at his funeral. He spoke for 40 minutes, and most of it was political garbage. He was just race-baiting and going after Trump a little bit and suggesting policy plans and all kinds of stuff that is just super inappropriate appropriate for a number of reasons. I mean, first of all, we're talking about a funeral. It's supposed to be about John Lewis's life and, you know, maybe you say some memories you had about him, talk about how he had a good life or something like that. But no, Obama just pivots and talks about current events, po- politics, bashing Trump and all this other stuff. He talks about this filibuster he wants to abandon and he also wants to encourage mail-in voting, like basically just harping on all the typical liberal talking points. So we're going to go over that soon. We're going to check some videos and see what he has to say. The first one here is from CBS News. It says, in a John Lewis eulogy, Obama calls for making Election Day a federal holiday, giving equal representation to citizens in Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico, ending partisan gerrymandering and eliminating the filibuster if it interferes with American rights. Now, the thing to note about this is very interesting is the fact that Obama has used the filibuster move himself on a specific occasion. He used the filibuster, basically the filibuster, if you don't know, it's this tool that's used in Congress where basically a congressperson can have the floor and keep going as long as they keep talking and they keep talking long and longer and longer. And it's just kind of like a delay tactic. They use the filibuster to keep things going and to try to like whittle down their opponent's patience and they'll just keep talking like the famous filibusters I heard about back when I was in school in history class there was like people that would read from books and they would read like a whole book or like a passage from the bible or something like that just anything they could do to hold the floor and keep the discussion going and it goes back to this rule in congress and the government where If the discussion is still going, they kind of keep it going. They can't really vote until they're done talking about an issue. Like, for example, if it's an issue about whether or not we should go to war or whether or not we should pass this law or something like that, people can filibuster to try to delay the vote. And that's a move that's been around for a while. You know, you could have your opinion on it if you want, if you don't want. But the point is, Obama's trying to get it removed, even though he used it himself. And this is just a typical example of them, the Democrats, doing as I say, not as I do. You know, they're very cool with them doing something, but they want to tell other people not to do it. And before we even get to the video, that's actually true with this funeral, too. Because if you guys don't know, we're not allowed to go to church right now. They're not allowed to have people at the hospital when someone dies. And even like most funerals have been limited to like people can't even have funerals for their loved ones anymore. I've seen people post about funerals having to be limited to a certain amount of people if they can even have them. Like you can have five or 10 people at this funeral. But as you'll see in this video, these Democrats don't believe in what they preach. They tell other people to do something, but they're fine with having this big funeral themselves. There's a lot of people at this funeral. There's people crowded in the stands, sitting around shoulder to shoulder. They really don't care. They don't care. They just put those rules on everyone else because they're trying to scare everyone, but they deep down know it's not really as big a deal as they claim. So with that said, let's go ahead and check out the video. The John Lewis Voting Rights Act, 
We should keep marching to make it even better <laughs> by making sure every American is automatically registered to vote, including former inmates who've earned their second chance. So there's the large crowd I was talking about. Clearly not social distancing. Sure, they're wearing masks, but this is not far enough apart. Like they've got a ton of people here and I'm not saying they can't. Like I'm not the one that's trying to stop large gatherings. Like if people want to risk it, that's their own right. But they're definitely hypocritical. They're definitely not practicing what they preach. Sure, they've got masks on. Mask is like the new thing. It's like this new bad it's like smartphones like you know 10 years ago everyone had smartphones and started getting them popping up around 2010 2012 and now it's mass now it's like oh i got a virtue signal with the mask oh my god and uh yeah it's just showing that they're not honest they're not straightforward they don't really think it's as scary as they claim and the mask is just kind of like a cover-up for that a literal cover-up and a figurative one but also the other thing like what obama just said he wants to automatically enroll people to vote and of course he's pushing to make criminals be able to vote like convicts should be able to get to vote again and yeah that's a noble cause i mean it sounds nice like let's let these you know rehabilitated people get their rights to vote again but we all know this is being done like every single move for the democrats it's not about like freedom and giving people rights and doing things because they're the right thing to do. It's just because they want to get more votes. They know that the criminals are going to vote for them. They know that the large majority of these criminals are Democrats and Democrat and Biden voters, you know, like they're getting arrested from these protests. They're committing crimes in the major cities. They're parts of these crime waves and they're just trying to, you know, shift it into their direction. They act like they're trying to help the country, but they're just trying to help themselves. By adding polling places and expanding early voting and making Election Day a national holiday. So if you are somebody who's working in a factory or you're a single mom who's got to go to her job and doesn't get time off. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and call him out for speaking with an accent. Like he said factory and doesn't get a time off like he's trying to like pander to like these like southern black like baptist like like religious people like this is actually what hillary clinton does but it's more obvious with her because she's like an old white lady who probably doesn't even know any black people besides obama but obama's acting like he's some kind of like down to earth like black person now when he's not at all he's not even he's half black he's from chicago he's a northern like elitist he's studied at these highfalutin like fancy colleges and all that stuff i mean getting an education is good of course but this idea that he's like going to the factory like he's given this this voice he's pandering to them he's trying to act like he's this like southern gentleman or something but it's really really cringe and then on top of that let's keep in mind this is a funeral it's supposed to be about john lewis sure he was a big time politician too and he would probably agree with all these points but it's just like really political and the fact that they're doing this on this guy's day is super messed up and then the whole hypocr hypocrisy is really bad too next let's skip to this part this is the part where he mentions trump indirectly but today we witness with our own eyes police officers kneeling on the necks of black americans george wallace may be gone but we can witness our federal government sending agents to use tear gas and batons against peaceful demonstrators. Peaceful? What? What is this guy talking about? I mean, first of all, he acts like the cop that was kneeling on the perpetrator in Minneapolis. He acts like that guy was innocent too. Like that guy was totally up on drugs. He was resisting arrest and being a crazy person committing crimes. And then next he says that the federal government is sending in troops at peaceful protesters. Like this guy is delusional. This is totally made up. This is a total lie, a total fabrication. I mean, what? Peaceful protesters? He really thinks that they're going to throw a tear gas can at a peaceful protest. Like, that is insane. That's never happened. There's no proof of that. This is absolute lies. This is a total BS comment. There are those in power who are doing their darndest to discourage people from voting. 
by closing polling locations and targeting minorities and students with restrictive ID laws and attacking our voting rights with surgical precision, even undermining the Postal Service in the run-up to an election. What? Who is taking away people's voting rights? Asking someone to present an ID isn't taking away their voting rights. Are you insane? Are you insane? This is so crazy. I can't believe it. Like, okay, so someone has to prove who they are when they vote. That's a problem. Oh, is it is it a problem whenever you have to ha- show an ID when you buy a beer at, like, any bar in the country? Like, is that restrictive and, like, against people's rights? Like, he really acts like we're just dumb. This guy thinks everyone's dumb. Like, okay, yeah, uh voter id laws are restrictive and how does that even direct at minorities too like how does asking for an id for everyone how does that hurt minorities more i don't get it like really i know i've seen these dummies try to explain it and they they go all pandering and they actually they start to treat the black people like children because they'll say oh you know it's harder for black people to get an id it's harder for them to get on the internet or find the dmv but this has all been debunked there was a famous video where the guy would interview people and yeah he saw like white liberals at college saying this stuff saying that black people can't get ids and then he went to new york city and talk to real black people and they're like oh i have an id i could get an id i have internet on my phone i know the dmv is right across the street over there the idea that these people can't get ids is insane and then the fact that oh voter id laws is going to attack minorities more it doesn't make any sense the truth of the matter is and this goes to other issues too is they don't want ids because they don't want people to have to prove who they are because that makes it easier to cheat They want to cheat and get other people voting for other people. They're going to look around and say, hey, these people aren't voting anyway. Let's just pretend I'm Chris or John or Jacob. You know, like these people aren't voting. I'm just going to vote for them. You don't even have to prove who you are. So let's do it. And that goes back to the mail-in voting thing. That's what he's getting at, too. He's talking about the mail and the post office and getting them involved. And he wants to perpetuate and try to get mail-in voting to be a big thing, too. And we all know that's easy to cheat, too. Votes get lost in the mail. People throw away votes that they don't like. They add votes in that they do like. They make dead people vote. Like This is all about the Democrats trying to cheat. And they're trying to do it so late in the game, like we're less than 100 days away from the election, and they want to totally change all the rules. They want to change everything that's going on, our total legacy, our total history. And it's really frustrating, especially coming from this former president, Barack Hussein Obama, who I think now we're seeing as time passes, he's becoming and we're seeing that he was one of the worst presidents of all time. That about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you comment your thoughts on everything below. Also hit that like button to get this thing shared. And until next time, have a great day.